Good morning, data fans, and welcome back to stunning San Francisco. It happens to be a fabulous summer day here, which we don't always get to say. We are at Databricks Data and AI Summit. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host and co-analyst today, John Furrier. John, good morning. Yeah. I mean, it's a great show. Databricks always brings the tech angles. They're more open source oriented, and uh, it's a market that's growing and all the picks and shovels are coming out and the, the tooling's growing, so it's a growth market, but there's a lot to fix. And so, products that are winning are the ones that are moving the needle, so this next segment, we're going to get into it. Speaking of products that are winning, really excited to welcome to the stage Anjan from Fivetran. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, excited to be here. What makes you excited to be here this morning? Look, it's a, it's a great time to be in data. Like, AI is like, everyone's talking about AI, but like, for you to kind of get to AI, you got to be at data, and like Databricks is driving a lot of innovation. Some of the key things that you saw this morning are exciting. I mean, like they had me at AI and query optimization. Like that's like, AI is making things <laughs> faster for us. So yeah. it was a great keynote, I thought. It, it, it absolutely is. Five a new role for you. Three yeah. weeks ago, congratulations. Thank you. You mentioned how easy Five Trend is to use, and that was a big part of the appeal for you joining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it so easy to use? Look, I mean, like part of the reason uh, when like I joined Fivetran is like the product is so simple to use. Like if you want to move data from say a Postgres to a Snowflake or Postgres to Databricks, like you could do four clicks and you move your data. Like it, and that's not that's easy to do. Like underneath there's like a lot of complexity. It's one thing to move data, it's another thing to move data correctly. Mm -hmm. Like so all the hard parts, like the team does an amazing job fixing it. So it looks super easy on the top, but underneath, okay, there's a ton of stuff the team has to do, like schema evolution, data getting there correctly. And like, and this is sort of where like DIY, like sort of customers that want to do it on their own, they kind of get it right. Mm -hmm once and then like data, once the schema changes, the, the data doesn't do it right. So I'm super excited to be here at Fivetran. Uh, amazing vision by George and, and Taylor. Like I yeah. love what where George is taking the company, so super excited to be at Fivetran. Oh, congratulations, you guys got great rave reviews on theCUBE uh, last week. I want to ask you though, the question around the data movement. Yeah. Um, we heard Ali Godsey say on stage, Data fragmentation, the data estates are fragmented, a huge problem. Yeah. Lakes are supposed to solve that, but okay, still got to work on that. Yeah. What's the driver of it, the data movement? Is it the GM uh, customer was saying they had to hunt for all the data, took up all yeah. their time. Yeah, yeah. Is it time? Is it they're resetting up the data for AI? Is it because that's the natural fluid nature of it for harmonization? Yeah, yeah like so if you're a company, you've got like tens of sources, right? You've got lots of databases, lots of applications, and then like so. Like for analytics, you're like, okay, I'll just get the operational data out of the databases, I'll get some of my applications. But now with AI, like, oh, some of your context is in these other applications that are super important. So you really need to get the data to a single destination, like, or a storage layer. If you don't do that, like, you're missing out. Like, so I think that's the first motivation is, if you want agility, if you want to go really run analytics, and then, like, LLMs are able to do things analytics couldn't. Right, they're able to kind of parse their unstructured data, they're able to parse through sources and give you new insight. So I think it's paramount, like companies first invest in moving data and moving data quickly. And if you're a company that is looking at stale data from one of these sources, that could be the missing thing for driving a new business model, driving innovation. So uh, I think part of this is like it's not being a focus for companies. And analytics was, should have always been important to, to kind of put the data out there. I think AI makes it imperative to do it. And then like a tool like Fivetran, we make it so easy for you. Like I got a quote from a, a customer the other day. It would take him six weeks to do one source to a destination. And it, he told him, he got on a meeting. Six weeks? He got, he got on a meeting with his team and did it live on a call, live. It just that's moved how it the data. Be. And like that's our job. Like we're, we are the plumbing company. We're going to make it super easy to move the data. And we do it across 500 data sources. And we've invested a ton there. I can chat a little bit about how we're doing that. Real quick, just so people know how they can consume it. On-prem, in the cloud, hybrid, what's the so consumption? We've got a few different models. Uh, you can certainly like just literally go sign up, five minutes, move data, we're a SaaS company. Uh, we, we recently launched a hybrid deployment, sort of like customers can go uh, add these things in our SaaS control plane, and then but the data plane sits on the customer site. So it could be your on-prem, it could be your VPC. So like for most companies that are security conscious, that model will do. 
Okay, so you're a plumber, data plumber, I like that term. Um, yes. Who's your target customer and does it change with Gen AI? We, our keynote review this morning, we yeah, talked yeah. about how Databricks is looking at their personas and mm -hmm. shifting significantly. Data yeah. engineering still a hot category. Right. Who do you guys talk to? What's the, are you uh, more data infrastructure, data engineering, or? I think it's a, it's a spectrum, yeah. like certainly data engineers, data teams, they'll be like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, like I'm going to do something more valuable. Uh, if you're a team that's kind of more on the analyst side, like, oh, we've got a great product for you. We, we, we have LOBs try us out. So I, I think it's a spectrum. If you're an analyst, you can use our product. If you're an engineer, you can use our product. It's kind of built for the scale and the throughput for an engineer needs, and it's built for the simplicity for an analyst. So it's, it's going back to that easy to use piece yeah. that you were talking about across the organization. I love that. So talking about your customer types, we've heard, we, we talked about Lyra Health uh, on SiliconANGLE last week. I know you've got a couple examples for yeah. us today. Maybe give us a little Condé, yeah, like maybe a, a little I mean, so, Goldman uh, Sachs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Condé asked, like there, it's super interesting, I was reading the notes on this one, uh, they're paying company of GQ and, and Bogue and so on. They have close to 500 million active users, like so online, they've got like a close to 100 print million I mean, print every users. single one of us probably reads something right, that Condé publishes right. every day, whether and, we realize it or not. But think about it, like they generate trillions of data points. Absolutely. Like you and me reading it, like, like how am I using it, like how many magazines am I using it. So they weren't able to collate all of that in a single place, so we helped them put all of the data in Delta, in Databricks, and now you've got all the data and you can kind of do, oh, I can give you personalized content, mm -hmm. I can tell you what to do. That likely drove new business models and new monetization opportunities. So it started with, let's collect all the data in time that actually, in a way that makes a difference for, for them. Uh, so it's been a huge success story, we've been a great partner uh, driving that story. That's, I, I think that's awesome. I'm personally a Condé consumer, so I think about how So many, we're helping you kind yeah, of get know, better content. I know, I'm thinking about how many different data points that I pull from them if I browse yeah. a GQ article versus read all of the travel stuff I'm looking at for this summer. So yeah. it's fun. You mentioned you also had a Goldman Sachs AI example. Yeah, let me chat about Sachs, actually. Yeah. It's like the, the retailer Sachs. So, oh, uh, Sachs, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is an interesting story as well. So there's a little bit of an AI angle there. Again, same thing, like struggling, they have lots of data sources. And the first problem is like, hey, why don't we help you put the data uh, in a data lake and, and like start thinking about it. But what they're doing now is, okay, now they have all that context. So if they get a phone call uh, by, and customer support sort of picks up, now they're able to, now that they've made the investment to put all the data in a single location, they can point to an LLM and the LLM's kind of giving them an assist. Every time you call them and ask them a question, they're getting a kind of a packaged answer and like it's up to the customer service agent whether they want to kind of use that or not. So this is where all that data investment, now they're able to turbocharge with AI, which I think is fascinating. And, and enhance that customer experience. Exactly. I love it. Well, I want to ask you about the uh, relationship you guys have with Databricks, obviously it's their yeah. show. Yeah. You guys are in the ecosystem. Ollie's on stage saying yeah. ecosystem's critical to their success. Yeah, yeah. Obviously it's a platform, they need it. Although Jensen Wong called a dip. <laughs> <laughs> he is almost as good as NIMS, which is his, his acronym. Right, but right. they got the platform, you guys are a partner. Yeah. Talk about the relationship, how you guys work with Databricks, how's that going? No, we're, we're, we are a uh, very close collaborator with Databricks. We have been for a number of years. I think the best way to kind of count that is the number of joint customers that we have hundreds of joint customers with Databricks. We work very closely. I'm su I mean, like, kind of excited about some of their announcements. Like, there's something that'll come out tomorrow that we're working with them on. So, it's been a very deep relationship uh, with Databricks. Uh, George and Ollie talk all the time. So, uh, and I think it's really, it, it, the, the foundation of the partnership is co joint customers. You keep those lakes it, clean, right? Keep those <laughs> lakes clean, right? Like, and I, I kind of want to commend what yeah, they've done. Yeah. Like, uh, they're, they're, they're committed to being open yeah. and also kind of snowflake, I'd say, uh, super eager to see how that kind of pans out. I mean, open sourcing Unity was a pretty big deal. Uh, it was kind of already open, but that gives the mm -hmm. government. I mean, like, I, kudos to uh, Polaris and Snowflake for open sourcing, kudos to Ollie for open sourcing Unity. It is a great thing for our industry. Like, like, let's figure out what customers want and then what's in there. There's no more black boxes. From a product perspective, share your thoughts on open source relative to developers standardizing around or formatting with data, because as data becomes generative, yeah, yeah. it's going to be in line in the coding cycle. So data is going to be part of coding. Right, right. And you're starting to see that now, not just in a database that part. Right, right, Decoupling right. compute from data is going to enable some pretty cool things. What's the open source angle? What's, what's in it for the open source participant? What, what should, what's the ideal product scenario to evolve, if you had to 
gets that. No, look, I, I think first, uh, you're going to get a ton of adoption when things are open. Like we've seen so many examples in our industry, a Spark or, or Kafka and so mm -hmm. on, and there are competing projects that didn't take off, right? Uh, you get overnight a ton of developers that are going to go commit and so on. Uh, you get a ton of free developers building, right? And then it still leaves vendors an opportunity to go and build the enterprise capabilities, kind of go innovate on top of that, but you are partnering with the open source ecosystem. Where it goes wrong is you try to do something that's against the customers. Let the customers drive you, and like as a product guy, you really want to go where the customers want. Yeah. And like the best way is like, go talk to a bunch of customers using the open source and be like, where, what are the right. problems you're looking at and help solve that. So it becomes a lot easier as a product yeah. guy. And Iceberg, what's your view on Iceberg and uh, Delta Lake? So I, I think they're two great table formats. Like I, like I think we're going to support, we support both of them. Uh, exciting to see how maybe both of them come together. Uh, I, I think the thing that I love is we are finally talking about a couple of formats, mm -hmm. maybe one or two catalog yeah. formats as well, and we are going to spend, a ton, we, actually we've been spending a ton of time optimizing and moving data to Iceberg and Delta, so it's finally good to see okay. open table <laughs> formats, open metadata catalogs, uh, and then we're going to be right there with our customers. I'm curious because I know the role of a chief product officer. There's a little bit of tension with marketing and some of the other yeah. teams as yeah, you yeah. prioritize what's in your product roadmap. How do you approach that? It's a big challenge when things are moving as fast as they are right now. No, it, it, like that's a, I, I think it's a really good question, right? And often I think about quantitative and qualitative data. And if you go like interview your best customers and like maybe, maybe sort of thought leaders and you get a ton of data, on like our customers using it, like maybe some open source customers like we mentioned, and then like you put that in front of, uh, you, you sort of massage the data, and then I kind of, how you prioritize becomes a boring exercise. But if you don't have the data, then it kind of gets into a conflict. So I, like Rachel and I, yeah, present the data, she's like, yeah, I think we should do that, right? And then obviously there are strategic bets yeah, yeah. that you got to make, and then like do that with conviction. You know your data is good if that conversation is boring. I really like that actually as a yeah. benchmark. I don't think I've ever had one of those conversations yeah. be boring. So I think that's a, yeah, it's a really, I mean, well, you're obviously your process is working if you're figuring that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like, I mean, you've been in data and analytics for a long time. It feels like the light is shining on your space a little bit more yeah. right now than normal. Would you agree? Is this a moment for you? No, it's a great time for us, right? So if you think about, like, we've got many sort of tailwinds. AI, like, for you to build great models and great insight, the first thing you have to do is move your data. Uh, like, we invested in Iceberg and Delta, and like, and this is important, like, we have 500 data sources that you can click a button and you get an Iceberg table, or you get a Delta table. And that, for a customer who's now thinking about that, is like less headache. It's hard to like move that data when the schema changes, how do you think about updates, how do you think about governance, so we're just going to take all of those problems away for customers, so we feel like we've got two great trends, uh, we've got great customers, and we've got like over 200 customers using our managed data lakes product, so that's like, where, where the puck's going. What's the big drivers on the product-led growth you guys are seeing? Obviously, you got a great product, yeah, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. I mean, having a simple product that's easy to use, that does a lot of yeah. high performance capabilities is a winner. Oh, yeah. we, we've seen that. Is it, is it the AI readiness, or is it just data management in general still growing, more data's coming in, yeah. is it, or both? What, what, how Actually, would you rank the... the it's, it's funny, like, we'd be surprised to find, like, data is even going on prem. Data's going in the cloud, data's going everywhere. <laughs> like we're just collecting mm -hmm. more data, which is good for us, right? I think on the product like growth, if a customer likes it, and they're going to tell their LOB, they're going to tell their colleagues, it's really that. Like if the experience is great, then it sort of the PLG sort of life cycle just goes through. It's like kind of a flywheel we think. So really obsess about moving data, moving data correctly, moving to the right formats, and sort of sort of tweaking all the knobs and you're like, hey, I just need to turn the button on, it works. Everyone wants that easy start button. Awesome. Yeah. All right, it's a very exciting time, obviously. You probably have a little, you mentioned there's an announcement coming tomorrow, I won't let you spoil it for yeah, us, yeah. but more broadly speaking, the next time we have your lovely self on our show, let's say at the summit next year, Yeah. what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say today? I think uh, I'd hope our customers would say, if someone's moving data to Iceberg or Delta, they're like, I'm just using Fivefront. 
Perfect. Awesome. Love the sound bite. We'll be we'll be playing that back on our highlight reel when I we have it. you back on the show. Yeah. Anjan, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Absolutely. Thank Such an exciting Thanks time for having for you. me. Yeah. Hey, our pleasure, John. Great questions yeah. as always. And thank all of you for tuning in to our two days of fantastic coverage here in our hometown of San Francisco, California. My name is Savannah Peterson here at Databricks, the Data and AI Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.